fact, they produced very large problems indeed. George Ball, the brilliant and courageous Undersecretary of State at the time of the 67 war, wrote about the attack on the liberty subsequently. He said, The ultimate lesson of the liberty attack was that it had far more effect on policy in Israel than in America. Israel's leaders concluded that nothing they might do would offend the Americans to the point of reprisal. If America's leaders did not have the courage to punish Israel for the blatant murder of American citizens, it seemed clear that their American friends would let them get away with almost anything. Fleet Tug Papago would be our escort into Malta. The divers rigged a large canvas over the torpedo hole and it was secured in place using ropes that were passed under the hull and over the main deck. Once the canvas was in place, the Liberty could proceed under its own power towards Malta. Uh, once we were in dry dock in Malta, then came the gruesome task of removing the bodies and the debris from the research uh, I was unfortunate enough to draw the first shift uh, as part of our division, which would be used to cut the debris uh, away from the bodies so they could research spaces. The first body to come out was almost unrecognizable. Due to being in salt water for six days, the body was almost completely hairless. We fingerprinted the body, put it in a body bag, uh, and moved it out of the spaces. This continued through the night and on into the next day. After 33 days in Malta and the Liberty was repaired, we brought the ship back to Norfolk. Now it was over. The Liberty was home. Over. It will never be over until the truth is known. The cover-up began with the report of the casualties. The first word that we had out was before the torpedo attack that we had nine dead and 75 wounded. This has been the number that has almost invariably appeared in the newspapers as an attempt to minimize the nature of the attack, the ferocity of the attack, and the unjustifiable nature of the attack. There was no uh, press campaign to uh, uh, cover this in its entirety uh, for the benefit of the American people. As a matter of fact, uh, in many cases, the press uh, uh, supported the Israeli campaign. Future Judge Advocate General of the Navy, Rear Admiral Merlin Starring, was given less than 24 hours to review the 600-page Court of Inquiry report. In the course of my career as a Navy lawyer, I have been called upon to review and take actions upon uh, hundreds of investigations of various uh, degrees of importance and volume. This is the only instance in which a record of such an investigation has been withdrawn from me after I had been asked to review it and uh, had not been given an opportunity to complete my advice to the convening authority. As you know, it's a, a voluminous document. And one of the things that uh, I initially had difficulty with, and still do, is the fact that the very first statement of fact that the court arrived at and presented was this. Available evidence combines to indicate the attack on liberty on 8 June was in fact a case of mistaken identity. Now that is the sort of thing in this record that I found great difficulty in supporting from the evidence that was included. I'm convinced that it was withdrawn from me in this instance because of my statement to Captain Boston that I was having serious problems with the evidence that was available to support the statements of fact. In the subsequent cover-up, the Israelis maintained that they thought the Liberty was the small Egyptian freighter, the al -Qusair. This is not credible. Not only was the Liberty flying a large American flag, but it was five times as large as the al -Qusair, and its profile was unique it bore no resemblance whatsoever to the Egyptian ship. Tordella was the deputy director at the time of the attack. Tordella, when he received the copy of the 
um, the Israeli uh, mistake explanation, wrote across the top of it a nice whitewash. He didn't believe it at all. And he later wrote another memorandum for the record indicating that uh, he thought that uh, the most likely explanation was that uh, the Israelis attacked the liberty because uh, they didn't want the liberty to hear what was going on in the Sinai. Um, and this is the highest professional at NSA. Uh, in addition, the, the uh, director of NSA uh, at the time, Marshall Carter, um, told me that uh, he thought it was deliberate. In addition to that, he was very uh, offended in another memorandum he wrote that um, it appeared that the uh, Johnson administration wanted to cover up the whole thing. They actually wanted to sink the ship so that Israel wouldn't be embarrassed. Admiral Kidd, uh, when he came aboard our ship to interview the survivors, uh, he got us in small groups, three or four or five sailors, and he would ask us questions. The first thing he did is uh, he took off his stars, laid them on the table, and said, "Listen, open up to me and talk to me, just like her. I'm just one of, just like you, one of you." So we did. We trusted him. We opened up with our hearts. We told him exactly the way we felt, what happened, what we saw. And when that was done, he put his stars back on, on his lapel. And he ordered us not to say anything to anybody, our families, friends, shipmates, anyone. If we did, we faced the possibility of a court-martial, penitentiary, or worse. And everyone knew what worse meant. Actually, he scared the death out of me. I didn't talk about the attack to anyone for almost 20 years. Not knowing why they did this and what, and not having our government back us then and now. It's, it's an open sore. It's, uh, it's, it's festering uh, to this day. It's not going away. I think it's important that we do have an investigation. I, w I would never give up on that until I'm too old to come to these things. It needs to be done. Uh, Pete Buecher from the Pueblo said he wouldn't even have gone if he could have known what really happened to us. All he knew was some piddly little thing he heard about on the news. In late 1991, Dwight Porter, who was ambassador to Lebanon during the 1967 war, told columnists Evans and Novak that immediately after the attack on the Liberty, the CIA station chief handed him intercepted messages between the Israeli war room and their planes. The pilots were given orders to attack the ship, and they replied immediately that it was an American ship. The Israeli headquarters responded, you have your orders, attack the ship. The pilots tried once again, but it's an American ship, we can see its flag. And headquarters insisted, you have your orders, attack it. And attack it they did, and the consequences are well known. So one of the things I found out was that, uh, that had never been discovered before, uh, was the fact that at the time the Liberty was attacked, the NSA also had an eavesdropping plane flying high above the scene of the action. It was an EC-121, and uh, during the entire course of the war, the U.S. Uh, had uh, eavesdropping planes going over the um, area, collecting signals, eavesdropping on what was going on below. And this plane was uh, flying right over the scene of the attack, and I talked to two of the crew members of the plane, and both of them agreed that the, what they heard were comments from both the pilots and the torpedo boat uh, uh, personnel uh, mentioning the U.S. flag. Uh, now that flies in the face of what the Israeli explanation says. The Israeli explanation says nobody on either the planes or the ships ever saw a U.S. flag. Evans and Novak got further confirmation of the Israeli attack from an American-born Israeli major, Seth Mintz, who was in the Israeli war room at the time of the attack. He told the reporters, quote, Everyone felt that it was an American ship and that it was the Liberty. There were comments about the markings, about the flag. Everybody in the room was convinced it was an American ship, unquote. Mintz told Evans and Novak that the Israelis were guilty of an outrage. True. But the American suppression of the truth was an equal outrage. Well, at the time the Liberty was off the coast of the Sinai, off the coast of uh, um, 
where El Arish was on the uh, Sinai Peninsula. Um, according to Israeli uh, military historians uh, who, who wrote reports of it at the time uh, and other eyewitnesses, the um, Israeli military was uh, killing prisoners, Egyptian prisoners, uh, committing war crimes, uh, desperate acts of, uh, of uh, war crimes in order to uh, so they wouldn't have to transport the prisoners because they had no place to put the prisoners. They decided to take the most expedi uh, expedient method and, and just kill them. If the planes dispatched by the Saratoga had continued to the rescue, the Israelis would have been driven off. But Washington took the Israelis at their word. They said they had recognized their error and they apologized. And the attack had already stopped, they said. But they were lying. The attack continued for another hour and 20 minutes, during which 25 more Americans